In this video, I'm going to talk about 11 interesting visualization tips in Power BI. No further ado, let's go. Trick number one, how do you convert a chart into a temporary table so that you can take a look at the data? A lot of times you're going to be working with charts and visualizations and perhaps the numbers on the charts are not going to be as clear. So although I can take a look at this particular chart, but I want to convert this chart into a table visualization temporarily to take a look at what the numbers are behind. I can just select the chart obviously and use the shortcut Alt Shift F11 to convert this chart temporarily into a table. And that's where I can take a look at the table and the numbers behind of that particular chart. And if you just click on go back to the report, you're just back at your visualization again. Trick number two, the classic pivot table view, but in Power BI. Take a look at this little matrix visual that I'm working with. In the first column of this visual, I not only have the year, but also the channel of the sales. But hey, I don't really want to see this this way. I would like to have two different columns. So one for the year, the year should be here and the channel should remain here and then should be the total sales measures, whatever that is. So how do we do that? This is very, very simple. You can just click on the visual, go over to the format of that visual, search for something called as step. And once you do that, you're going to see that the step layout is turned on under row headers. And if you just turn that off and you have the channel in a separate column altogether, I don't know why is the setting so weird in Power BI, but this is what it is. Trick number three, moving the visual faster on the screen using the shift key. Typically speaking, when you select any particular visual, and if you happen to use the arrow keys of the keyboard, the visual just nudges towards the left or the right or the direction of the keyboard. But if you happen to just use the shift key and then use the arrow keys left or the right or the bottom or the top arrow keys, the visual is going to move slightly faster. So take a look at this point in time. This is the shift movement moving quite fast. And this is just the regular movement of the arrow keys. It is quite slow. The next trick is to do with aligning two different objects on the canvas, be it charts, visual slicers, whatever that might be, but you will be able to align a lot more accurately with this trick. So generally, if you have to align this, you can perhaps even scroll this. And as you scroll this, you're going to see that you have these grid lines that will help you snap the object to the other object. But hey, um, I just don't really want to use the mouse so I can just select these two objects. So the first one and the second one, I can go over to the format align and I have a bunch of alignment options right here. So we have align left, align center, align right. For this one, I'm just going to choose align right. And this perfectly aligns the second object to the first one. As a side trick to the alignment trick that we have learned, this is going to be very useful when you're trying to distribute objects vertically. That means space between two different objects should be the same. So. I have multiple same card visuals right here. The card visuals do not make sense, but hey, I have cards right here. Now at the moment, maybe if I just move this card towards the far right, and I want all the other cards to have equal distance in between them, and they should also be aligned to the top. How do I do that? All of in one go. You can just select all of these card visuals through a drag effect, and then go over to the format. In the format, click on align. The first alignment that I will do is align to the top. All of them get aligned to the top. And now I will say, hey, why don't you distribute them horizontally? So align and we have an option of distribute horizontally and vertically. Vertically is going to be this distance, like vertical distance between the two objects, this distance, but horizontal is going to be this distance between the two objects. So I'm just going to do that again, align, distribute horizontally, and the distribution is done and all the objects are at equidistant size. If you're enjoying the video so far, I have got two brilliant courses on Power BI, Power Query, M Language, and the DAX courses. These are extremely well-structured courses. I talk about the problems, give you the way to think, logically frame the problem so that you're even able to understand what's going on and even apply those concepts to solve your own real-time problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses in case you're interested to level up your Power BI skills, I would highly recommend to check out these courses. All right, trick number five, sorting the table visual by multiple columns. So take a look. I am working with a table visual, not a matrix, but a table visualization. And in this table visualization, maybe I'd like to sort it by the band and then by the region. So I can just happen to click on the band and you can see that this is going to be sorted ascending or descending, depending upon the number of times that I click. And then once I want to sort the region, I can just use the shift key and then click on the region and the region is going to be sorted. I click again, this is going to be sorted descending. And just like that, you can click on multiple columns and have the data sorted by multiple columns just by that click. Now, one side note, in case you would like to remove the sort, you can go over to the ellipses icon, 
click on sort by and just click back on the brand and all the sorting is gone for the band and then again for the region click on the ellipsis sort by and click on the region again and the sorting is going to be removed and you're back at your original table in case for some reason you're presenting your power bi report within power bi desktop it's not advisable but in case you're doing that then it's ideal to lock the objects so that the objects or slicers charts whatever they don't move accidentally take a look so i have this you know little report if you can call it accidentally i could move an object from its position and i could distort the formatting of the entire report well what i can do is i can just go in the view tab locking the objects on the view tab is going to lock the entire report all the pages of your power bi file now you can obviously interact with it you can click on it and you can see the numbers changing but in case you try to move the object accidentally or intentionally it is not going to do that all right the next trick has to do with formatting zeros and ones so let's just say that you have a measure any measure that returns you the answer zero or one and you'd like to format that differently perhaps in a yes or a no a true or a false or an on or an off you can do that using the format function i'm going to show you how so i have this measure random zero or one and if you just take a look at the measure just ran between zero and one just to get the zeros or one i can use the format function and i can say hey whatever you get zero or one i would like that to be displayed as a true or a false so all the ones become a true and the zeros become a false so i can just write true and then slash and then i can write false all in the inverted commas close the bracket and press enter and you're now going to see that every zero is going to become a false and every two is one you can also change that to an on so on or an off that also works well you can also change that to a yes or a no and that also works just well now note that at the moment we have used the format function the format function is obviously going to convert the zero and one into a text value and that is what you're seeing it right here a lot of times people would like to copy data from the visual over to excel just for some investigation purposes or whatever that might be how do you do that please take a look so let's just say that i have this long matrix visualization and i'd like to take all of this data to excel there are two ways to do that the first way is that the entire visual i'm just going to click on the ellipses icon right here i'll click on export data this is going to give me the option to export this entire visual in the table format in a csv format in excel now note that there might be a chance that in case your table is very very complicated in terms of design or formatting all the formatting might not just come the same way but hey you might just get the entire data the second way in which you can copy the data is by selecting specific elements of the visual so let's just say that i only want to copy the affiliate data i can just happen to click on the affiliate you can see that there has been a selection i can right click and i can say that i'd like to copy the selection back in excel and i can just press ctrl v and this is going to copy and paste the entire data of affiliates only in my excel all right trick number nine apply all slices if you take a look at my visual right here i have product and i have region and i have this matrix visual assume that the current visual is somehow very very slow the queries are running very slow so what i want to do is i want to have all the slices applied first and then i want to see the effect of those slices sliced into my visuals well how do i do that how do i pause the slicers that's what i'm trying to say so at the moment if i just happen to click on a shampoo or a hair gel or a cream the slicers get applied but i don't really want to do that i want to first apply all the slicers and then click on apply slicers well there is a button to that so i'm going to go over to the insert tab in the insert tab i have the button right here and i can click on the apply slicers button and once i do that i get this little button right here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start to apply the slicers and you're going to see that the table is not going to change so i click on mumbai i click on um, the therapy shampoo i click on the smoothener and let's say the hair oil so all of these and you can see that there is a little waiting icon next to every single slicer that means these slicers are not applied yet now these are going to be applied only when i click on apply slicers button and that is also highlighted and now the slicers are applied and you can see the change of that in the visual this is very very helpful in case you are working with slower queries in your model well guess what there is also a clear slicers button available in power bi and you can do that to clear all the slicers off on the screen so i'm going to go over to the insert once again again in the buttons drop down and pick up the clear slicers button i get that i can place that right here now as soon as you click right here on this particular button you're going to clear off all the slicers off from the screen and the visual is going to be absolutely unfiltered i just click that and you can see that all the slicers are gone and the visual is absolutely unfiltered 
Trick number 10 is the fields parameter trick. I'm sure everybody has worked with fields parameter that lets you pick up a few columns of your choice and add them as a slicer. But did you know that you can also add the values of those columns as a slicer? Let me help you understand what am I trying to say. So let's just say that I have this simple uh, table visual right here and I have the first column is year, month and then the total sales. Now I would like to be able to slice this visual either by the channel or by the region. Both of these columns are there in my sales table. So if I just go take a look at my sales table, my region and my channel are two columns of my choice that I would like to place it as a slicer and that should appear in the slicer. So to do that, I can obviously use something like a fields parameter. So in the insert tab, in the modeling tab, sorry, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, new parameter and I'll say fields parameter. And this is just going to be ask me to give a column name or a table name. That's what I have done and choose the columns that I would want. So the first column of my choice is channel. The second column of my choice is region. I do that, add a slicer to this page, click on OK. And a slicer, obviously gigantic one is added to the page and I can push that off right here. Now, obviously, uh, if I just happen to click, nothing is going to happen because this slicer is not there in the visual. So let's just add that. So I can just add the column slicer off to the visual right here and I can see all the regions if I happen to click on region or if I click on the channel. This is the standard stuff that everybody knows about. Now, I would want to now add a secondary slicer, which is where I want to take a look at the values of those channels underneath here in the slicer. Well, you can do that. So I can just click on uh, the slicer and control C, control V. And now I can change the properties of the slicer, right click on the columns and I can say that, hey, Instead of the choice between the two columns, which is channel or the region, I would want to have the choice between the values of those columns. So I can say show values of the selected field, click on that. Now it is showing me the values in the channel column or the values in the region column and I can further filter down the values like that. This is pretty damn awesome. Trick number 11, page navigation. Back in the day, we used to do page navigation with bookmarks trickery. Now that is not needed anymore. You can use this very trick. So again, in the insert tab, we have the buttons drop down and I here I'm going to go to navigator and a page navigator. Just that literally you click there, you get a little slicer right here. If you happen to click on any values of the slicer, you're going to get to that particular page and take a look at my old tricks as well.